Where's your phone, point up? Look at that way, everyone's a lassie, sort your phone out. Is that what Tim Lassie comes in? Uh-huh. I'm sure we Liz will sort it. Timothy. Morning people. Just get you up on the big screen. That way I'll get to see your comments. Morning all. What have we got this morning? We're up to 69 already, that's not bad. Right, eh? I'd like to thank, uh, thank Sharon Sunshine Young for the wee book. Um, I don't know if you can see what it says in the front of it, folks, but it says, Davy says, question marks, and a wee book of best news quotes. Um, lovely wee thing. Um, and a wooden cover, and a nice wee notebook. Thank you, Sharon. That was very thoughtful of you. Um, Excellent wee thing. Right. 10.30. Time to get the show on the road. So we'll start today as we always do with the coronavirus update. And then we'll move on to review the stories I've picked took for yesterday's news. Okay. So here we go. Coronavirus update. These are the figures for the 11th of the 1st, 2021. Tested in Scotland since the pandemic reached our shores. 1,453,533 and that was plus 6,888 from Sunday to Monday. Tested positive since the pandemic reached their shores. 51,449 and that's plus 1,782 new positive cases from Sunday to Monday. Not great. And hospital there is 1,664 COVID patients, and that's plus 66. From Sunday to Monday, capacity is running out, kids. In the intensive care units, there are 126 COVID patients, and that's plus 3. Deaths, I'm sorry to report that from Sunday to Monday, one death um, by the hospital count was reported, and that takes that figure to 4,000. 969. Not great. Vaccinated. 163,377. No change from Sunday to Monday. Right? 2.99% of the population, or 1 in 33 of the population, have had the vaccine so far, and 36 have had both shots. Okay? Community and hospital deaths combined equals 6,686. We'll get an update on that on Wednesday. There's a fair number to go on to that, unfortunately. Um, and the, our condolences go to everyone who's lost someone in this pandemic. Right. News of you for Monday the 11th to the 1st, 2021. Monday started and all the rags speculating how long lockdown restrictions would last and a couple of the English rags go on Fury as SNP put in the above pandemic. The rags speculate that current COVID restrictions will uh, need to last right through the summer. And the mock fury at the SNP intending to go for independence despite the pandemic is just that. It's pretend fury. It's the intention of the papers to try and make the people angry, but the people are no bloody stupid. If they can go through Brexit negotiations and earn the Brexit cliff edge while in the middle of a pandemic, I'm sure we can have an independence referendum while the pandemic is going on. Apart from that, by the time we get run to it, almost everybody would have been um, vaccinated, right? But, you know, the Westminster government dealing, in, uh, dealing with a pandemic, the fallout of Brexit um, and a... Uh, and they've done it all bloody well badly. The negotiations and running the pandemic at the same time. And now we've got the fallout for Brexit just happening. Right. 
But this is another Scotland too wee, too stupid story. Apparently, Westminster and the English people can negotiate a trade deal and deal with a pandemic at the same time. But Scotland and Scotland's politicians, who are dealing with a pandemic much better than they Muppets doing in the House of Crooks and Carpetbaggers in West Westminster, apparently our politicians are too stupid to be able to negotiate independence at the same time as dealing with a pandemic, even though we're dealing with a pandemic much better than they Muppets doing the road. You know, I mean, it's just a too stupid story. We've got the English rags belittling us, and the English politic political parties in Scotland telling us, no, we can't have a bloody election, and we can't have a bloody referendum, because apparently we are too bloody stupid to multitask. Ah, I said this before. The country that invented the modern world is apparently in the eyes of our partners in the union too bloody stupid to multitask. Tell Mark when we were running the whole bloody empire for them. We managed to multitask then. So that's all it is. It is mock rage or they are trying to incite rage here in Scotland. It won't work of course because the people up here are not that stupid. But it's time to start with ain't green ink gang people, alright? It's time to call this stuff out. Call it out in the letter pages in these English rags and call it out in the comment sections in the Times and in the Telegraph and in the Daily Fail and in the bloody loony paper The Express. Right, now the three main celebrity magazines masquerading as newspapers, The Sun, The Record and The Star, all run on a football story. Celtic stupid trip to Dubai. These three rags are there to, di to um, distract people um, from what's actually going on in life. Leave them on the bloody newsstands, it's where they belong. They're no newspapers, they're celebrity ra uh, rags and that's it. All that's in them is celebrity and sports gossip. Right, moving on. Monday, Michelle Ballantyne, who recently quit the Tory party over differences in policy opinions, has been appointed Scottish leader of Reform UK, previously known as UKIP and the Brexit party. Miss Ballantyne, who is well known for her, who's well known for her extreme right-wing views, and as a supporter of the rape cause and two child benefit cap, has just consigned herself to the political scrapyard. But on the bright side, Reform UK's entry into a, um, Scottish politics will split the Tory vote. So hopefully, between them, they'll destroy their own voter base and we'll get neither of them or we'll get less bloody Tories in the, par in the Parliament anyway. Alright? Hey, we Douglas Dross, Ross and a Baroness Ruthie Tank Commander will be raging and spitting teeth because Ballantyne's gone squarely up against the Tories for the Brit vote. Right, moving on. Monday, an anti-lockdown protest takes place outside the Hollywood Parliament. A few dozen protesters showed up. Um with the intention to march from Holyrood to Butte House, uh, Butte House, the First Minister's official residence. The march didn't take place as police informed them of the Covid rules. Most of the protesters they dispersed. Four were arrested, two were issued a on-the-spot fines, um, two were charged in what appeared at Edinburgh Sheriff Court at a later date, and one person was reported to Procurator Fiscal for obstructing the police. These loonies are lying there. A couple of dozen of them, police asked them to disperse, most of them buggered off. A few of them made a bit of trouble for themselves and got themselves nicked. And that's exactly what they need to do. Out there recklessly endangering everybody else, well, and mainly themselves. But it means the police have got to put themselves in bloody harm's way. Right, Monday the BBC had to go at the remote learning approach eh, to learning. The BBC said that eh, they had eh, asked the 32 councils about their intentions for online learning and they got different responses from all the councils. Alright, 
For example, here in North, North Lanarkshire, um, the intention is that there will be some teams lessons and the kids will do the rest of the paperwork that's been sent to them and has to be submitted to the school each week to be um, graded. So that at the end of the year, because there's no exam process, then the children can get a final grade. All right. Now, the BBC had the pull and a couple of uh, people to have a wee word on it. Um, you know, Professor of Education for um, Edinburgh University, who was associated with the Labour Party, and uh, the wife of an ex Labour MSP. And they were there to bombast the Scottish Government, saying that there should be a uniformed approach right across the system. Right? But Tam uh, Bailey, former Children's Commissioner, told the BBC that the, that the school by school approach is the correct one with individual head teachers and class teachers knowing what's best for their pupils. And that's absolutely correct. Because they're in the schools, in their locale, they will know whether online learning is going to be appropriate because they know whether the kids can afford that or no. And uh, if no, they'll be setting out or uh, trying to get a grip of devices to get kids that haven't got access to devices. And they... Uh, and some remote learning will take place. But also yesterday it was being reported that the Teams, uh, Microsoft Teams, which most of the schools are using, is running slow because of the pressure of the amount of people want to log in to the Teams network so that they can have face-to-face -face with their teachers. It would appear that Microsoft Teams isn't up to the job. They might have to find a different platform for this. Okay. So... The BBC have a go at a, the education system for absolutely no other reason than the fact that it was there. They say, um, Tam Bailey got it right. The schools know their pupils best and they will know best how to do blended learning for them. All right. Monday, moving down the road to the House of Thieves and Carpetbaggers, the Commons, Chancellor Rishi Sunak tells MPs things to get worse before they get better. I we know. Apparently it's going to take about 50 years to recover from Brexit. Anyway, Mr Stunock stated that 800,000 people had lost their jobs since March and that's going to get worse. Mr Stunock then said the UK government had offered lots of financial support but couldn't uh, save every job. Mr Stunock said things will be tough and he would look at further help for business uh, for businesses through business rates and uh, for the hospitality and leisure industry in March's budget. All right. Mr Sunak said the government had provided $280 billion in business support, with 1.2 million companies having furloughed 10 million employees. He stated that the support, uh, there was also support for 3 million self-employed people. Labour sh sh uh, Shadow Chancellor down that road, uh, Annalise Dodds, said he offered nothing new and the update to the House was just a repeat of his last update four weeks ago. And that's what it was, folks. If you've seen it, it was just a carbon copy, cut and paste of what he said four weeks ago. He's done nothing to look at new ideas and how to help the business sector, especially in light of the Brexit uh, debacle and the trade deal that's turned out to be crap. Um, right, Davy says once again, any mention of the damage Brexit's doing to the economy. It was all what Sunak was talking about was the damage to the economy being done by COVID and the shutdowns and the restrictions. But this, the Tories are hiding um, behind COVID when the real damage is actually being done by Brexit and the Brexit vote, the dragging out of the negotiations and everything else. Because a, lot, a, a fair chunk of these companies, I think it was reported by a, the Federation of Small Business, that they expect to lose quarter of a million businesses this year because of lack of access to the EU market. Think about that, folks. Quarter of a million businesses. Small businesses, they're the backbone of the economy. Here in Scotland and in England and in Wales and Northern Ireland, 250,000 of them are expected to go bust and other people put on the brew because of the Brexit debacle and lack of access to the markets they already had in the EU. As we've already seen, fisheries has come to a standstill. The price of fish has crashed 
and uh, the fishing fleet's tied up. Processing plants will be dry, uh, grinded into your hole, and thousands of people will work in the processing of fish. Well, what's the bloody jobs? Right, but say the Tories are hiding the Brexit debacle behind the COVID pandemic. But the two of them together, and you're looking at a collapse in the economy here, folks. An absolute collapse in the economy, right? Monday, it's been reported, Fiona, this is about what we were talking about earlier. Monday, it's been reported that haulage companies in the UK and NI are refusing mi mixed, food load, uh, mixed food loads. Right, now, the practice known as groupage, uh, there is no just food, the date we uh, parts at anything. The practice is called groupage. It's where haulers will stick maybe 14 to 44 or 48 pallets on a motor, depending on how big the motor is, and they will demulty drop along the route. Okay, but anyway, hauliers in Northern Ireland and the UK are refusing, uh, refusing to take food groupage, which is a special type of groupage, into Northern Ireland. Right? They just won't do it. The amount of paperwork, customs checks, veterinary certificates, um, food safety certificates, and all that that's all going to be put together for these companies means that haulage companies, you can pull up your place to pick up one pallet and sit there all day waiting and get the paperwork for a uh, sort of do. They're just not going to do it. It's just not going to happen. How food goes into Northern Ireland from mainland UK is going to have to change. But the UK government don't care. I've said this already. What the UK government are going to do is they're going to ignore Northern Ireland and allow Southern Ireland and the EU to come to Northern Ireland's uh, rescue. Because Northern Ireland's getting pushed out the door. Right out the door. Now, in a related article, Professor A. Uh, Professor Brendan O'Weary, Professor of Polit Political Science at the University of Pennsylvania, and a founder member of a analysis and research on constitutional uh, matters for Ireland, North and South, said a referendum on Irish unity is coming, like it or not. That was him addressing the Irish people in the Irish Times, OK? Now, what he's saying is that he... Southern Ireland and the EU now have more control over Northern Ireland and its economy than the UK does, with Northern Ireland still being in the single market and the customs union. And what he was saying is the minority that is now unionist MPs or unionists in Northern Ireland are going to have to suck it up because what he calls cultural Catholics and people who have no interest in the troubles of the past, that's the young people that have been born in the last 30 years and have now come of voting age, they don't care about all the things of the past. They've got their eye on their pocket and their eye on their future. And the EU and reunification, according to uh, Professor Brendan O'Leary, is Northern Ireland's future. That's what Pre Professor O'Leary's going to say. Now, Professor O'Leary also says he expects Scotland to become independent. He, he, what he said was in the report, it's in the Irish Times, it's on my time when you want to read it, is that he expects the Scottish people to give the SNP, another majority in Hollywood um, this year, creating the conditions that, create, that, that existed in 2011. He thinks Westminster's no chance of refusing that referendum, and he thinks the people of Scotland will say yes. <coughs> it's an interesting read. As I say, it's on my timeline, it's for the Irish, it's for the Irish Times, okay? Right, Monday, doing that road in the house. Anyway, back to groupies, sorry. <laughs> The Road Haulage Association is reporting that a uh, most of the haulage companies are not going to um, take groupage into Northern Ireland when it comes to food stuff. So, right, so food shortages in Northern Ireland, and there's a story on a uh, um, out this morning in the Belfast Tele Telegraph. I think it was the Belfast News. If you want to know the paper better, um, which states quite clearly that uh, the UK's response to food shortages in Northern Ireland have been woeful, and the UK has just more or less walked away and left them to it. Right, anyway, moving on. Monday, down in the house of thieves and carpet baggers, um, it's announced that travellers to the UK will need to provide a... will need to prove that they've had a negative COVID test within 72 hours of travelling to the UK. Um, that comes into force on Friday, and visitors will still need to quarantine for 10 to 14 days on arrival. All right. 
Here we go. Monday. Sir Comrade Starmer calls on the Tory UK government to do more to protect household uh, incomes. Um, his call will fall on deaf ears. All right. Uh, well, I'll just fall on deaf ears. I mean, the whole point of the Conservative Party is to shrink the state and to do away with the safety net. It's there for people. Okay. And also on a uh, Monday, Sir Starmer faces more problems in his party as the controversial, uh, controversial Police and Human Sources Bill comes back to the Commons. Sir Starmer intends to whip the Labour Party into abstaining on the bill, which will allow law officers and agents the ability to break the law in the course of their duties. You get that? Here comes the Davy Says bit. Right, Davy Says, can you wrap your noggin round this, folks? Don't in that Parliament the legislating to allow law... No, the police that writes the laws are legislating to allow law officers in the course of their duties to break the bloody law with impunity. Right, we're talking about agents in the state here. Police officers, spooks, um, all sorts. Department of Food and Agriculture, believe it or not. All sorts. To break the law in the course of their duties. Now, if you're a political dissident, bang, your deed. Oh, it was in the course of a duty. Sorry, I didn't mean to kill him. That's all right. Part in the heat. That does away with one mere problem. You know. Now the Tories are getting way out of hand here, folks. You know the the party that used to be the party of business and of law and order have wrecked the bloody economy deliberately, and are putting laws in place which allow laws to be broken with impunity. You couldn't make this stuff up. Now, the last time any list was seen was in Germany. The Gestapo. And I do mean to make that comparison. The, the, the Gestapo stomped all over Germany doing whatever they wanted with impunity, with full support of the government. They put down political dissidents. They rounded up the Jews and murdered them. They rounded up the Romano Gypsies and murdered them. And this lot are passing similar bills. Can you imagine that you have a parliament, a legislator, that legislates to break the bloody law? I don't know, folks. I can't get my heat wrapped in that. Time we got away from these nut jobs down there. Mind, I used to work for the state. I know the sort of crap that we got up to. And given their spooks and their agents... The right to break the law in the course of their duties is bloody terrifying. By the way, this isn't the first time it's been done. Scotland Yard infiltrated almost every political and a active a, um, a, a activist group in the UK in the 60s, the 70s and the 80s. In fact, it led to problems in the trade union movement where they drew up a blacklist of tradesmen who would complain about things like health and safety and things like that. They would be booted out the job and they would, the blacklist would stop them from ever getting a job again. They would be classed as political dissidents and have their bloody lives ruined. This is scary stuff, people. The fact that this isn't getting the coverage it should be getting in the mainstream media is bloody criminal. It was the same the way they ignored the, the internal market bill. Well, this one's been get. And by the way, that's not the last one to go through. There's one to go through which will take the UK armed forces out with the norms of the G Geneva Convention, which would allow them to commit torture and murder with impunity in the field, in the theatre of war. This lot are turning back the cloak. And don't think for two minutes they will not use this stuff on their own citizens because they bloody well will. And that includes the one that allows soldiers to commit torture and murder and rape and all these things that are illegal in the Geneva Convention with impunity. 
They will. They will turn the guns on us and we will not have anywhere to run for cover. That lot doing that road are right-wing English nationalist nut jobs. And if the people in Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland have got any sense, we should club together and tell England and Westminster to get lost. No mere scene can we have a referendum. We're having a bloody referendum. Ireland's having a referendum. Wales is having a referendum. And England, you're on your own. Right, which brings us to the next bit, which is quite interesting. What I'm just saying there about Northern Ireland, Wales and, and Scotland having to get away from us more. Last night at 8, at 20.06pm, in a debate in the Commons on international trade, Theresa May states in the debate on international trade that a Scottish independence is a clear and present danger to the UK Global Britain project. You get that? Apparently we are a queer and present danger. With these bills they're putting through that bloody place in there, they can come after us with bloody impunity. Right? But as uh, Theresa May points out, without Scotland, and probably Wales and Northern Ireland, little England's nothing. It'll lose its seat in the UN Security Council, and it will be ignored by the rest of the world. It'll be completely dim diminished. And by the way, I don't think that'll be a bad thing with the English nationalist nutters doing that road. Because as I say, they're, they're following the same, same line that was followed in Germany in 1932. The very same bloody lines. History, history shows us this stuff. Wow. Right, Monday, a poll in the standings of UK leaders, a... Um, he has a Nicola Sturgeon out in front, head and shoulders above the rest. Right, her and Starm are on, on plus 15 UK wide, but at home she's got a rating of a plus 24, and 50% of the Scottish population thinks she's doing a good job, 65% of the Scottish population think Bojo's doing a bad job, and 63% of the UK population want Bojo to resign. <laughs> <coughs> so, Miss Sturgeon has still got favourable poll ratings here in Scotland. And yet the loony paper, the Express today, is running a story saying, pressure mounts on Miss Sturgeon to resign. Pressure through bloody well. It's another one of these English right-wing nutter rags. That's why I call it the loony paper. Right, Monday. Matt Hart was Hancock says cuts to the numbers of hospital beds in England to go ahead, despite the COVID pandemic. So they still intend to downscale their NHS down there and sell it off. No matter what they've learnt for the pandemic, they still intend to privatise the English NHS. And to downscale it. So much the promise of 50 new hospitals, um, 20,000 new nurses or whatever the hell it was. Huh? What are they going to be doing, isn't he? No, going to be any hospital beds for me to look after. Mental. Right, Monday, Labour MP Ben Bradshaw is 100% certain that Scotland will become independent and Westminster should not stand in the way. And what Ben Bradshaw was basically saying was democracy must out and that Westminster can't be stand in the way of democracy. The bloody well try. But we know what happened to Trump when he tried to stand in the way of democracy. Saying that, that nut still got a few days left. That nut job still got a few days left. Even though yesterday, um, House Speaker Nan uh, Nancy Pelosi said they're moving at a, at a rapid rate in order to impeach him because um, they couldn't convince Mike Pence and the, and the Cabinet to set him aside as unfit for his duties. So, now... The Democrats have control of the Senate and the House of Representatives uh, and the Congress, so they're going to impeach them. And this time there'll be no senators standing in the way to stop it. No Republican senators standing in the way to stop it. So hopefully in the next couple of days, Trump will be arrested and removed from office. The great thing about impeaching them is there goes his pension 
I can't remember how much it is, about a quarter of a million dollars a year, or maybe more. He gets a million dollars a year in um, travel expenses. He gets security for life at the cost of the American people. All of that will be gone if they impeach him. So even though he's only got nine days to go, or eight days to go, it's worth their while impeaching him. Because the other thing about impeaching him is, it means he can't run for public office again. Right. Right, moving on to this morning and what the papers have to say. Because we're uh, <laughs> time's getting on, I want to get a chance to get me chappies this morning, right? Yeah, it was on. 24-7 plans to uh, meet targets on vaccines. That's the story about England, actually. Um, and the idea is they're going to vaccinate people 24 hours a day. What are you going to do? Run around people's bed at night and jab them. I don't know. Right, the daily fail goes on. A Valentine's Day vow on vaccines, and that's the place they've all the over 70s vaccinated by the 14th of um, February. Been our story for doing that, rather not. Right, the Telegraph's on speed up vaccine rollout to match England, and that's a challenge to Miss Sturgeon. Listen, folks, see this crap. We have to explain to our friends, our families, and neighbours how this works. Central procurement in England are controlling the vaccine. Right? Public Health England are controlling the vaccine and they're meeting it out to England, Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland allegedly per capita share. Alright? But eh... Uh, so if there's any problems with the vaccine rule here in Scotland people, you have to get this through to your friends and family and neighbours to understand this. If there's problems with the vaccine, the vaccines here in Scotland, it isn't the Scottish government's fault. They are not procuring it by themselves. They might have to break away and procure it with themselves, the way they did with the PPE saga, and then just send Westminster the bill. If Westminster doesn't play fair here, all right. And uh, that's a wee bit further down the page and all. But remember, folks, make sure your friends, your family, and your neighbours and all that know that it's no Scottish government that's, go, that's buying in the vaccine and it's no the Scottish government that is a distributing the vaccine. That is happening for Public Health England. And once it gets here, then the Scottish government deals with it. Could you hang it up, please? I'm trying. Hang it up. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, for some reason, Sarah's sitting on the couch, but she wanted to phone me anyway. <laughs> Probably used to annoy you guys. <laughs> <coughs> um, right, uh, where was I? I'm not trying to phone you! Well, put the bloody phone down to James comes there and fixes it. No, I can... Say that, I'm broadcasting. I'm sorry! Right, no wonder everybody's laughing, eh? Right, the Looney Looney Rag the Express goes on, Sturgeon, we will hit February's vaccine target. Well, obviously we've got enough to finish that target. Um, the Scotsman goes on, half a million a, a week waiting over vaccine delay. Well, as I've already said, if there is a delay in this vaccine, you take that out in the hall, please. Could you take the call out in the hall? Right, and as I say, the Scotsman wants uh, the vaccine, he uh, says that he, uh, you know, uh, there'll be a delay in the vaccine rollout. Well, that's got nothing to do with, as I say, central procurement is happening by Public Health England. Right. Um, the Herald goes on. Online, a uh, bug's known about 40 days before first lesson. That's the team's a, a thing I was talking about years earlier when it came to um, um, blended learning. All right, apparently a Microsoft Teams isn't they working um, properly. Right, the Times is on. Scots being let down by a failing test and trace. Right, this is information was supplied to the Times and to the Metro and um, by. Gordon Brown, a think tank by Gordon Brown, right? 
Now, being let down by failing test and, uh, test and trace, well, for a start up here, it's called Test and Protect. And uh, the information was supplied to the Times by Gordon Brown's think tank. Scotland scheme, as I say, is Test and Protect, and it's working quite well. It's not working at 100% capacity, neither is. But it's working far better than the English Track and Trace, which isn't working at all. Right. The mess, the metro goes on, test and disgrace. And see, that's Gordon Brown's analysis again of our test and protect system up here, or his think tank's analysis of it. But remember, it's Gordon Brown. And him and the Labour Party have been trying to belittle the Scottish Government for as long as I can remember now. But eh, the Scottish Government hit back by saying the comparison with the rest of the UK was inaccurate because we do things differently here than what they do in our UK. Alright. The sun goes on, Celt isolate, football story. The national goes on, Royals ignored Scots government's appeal to scrap trip. So apparently William Kate was informed by the Scottish government, don't come to Scotland as um, we have travel restrictions. And apparently the arrogant imperialist pigs ignored their lawfully elected government, broke our laws and come up the road to park the ambulance service on the heat. And why Police Scotland hasn't been doing that road and lifted them, I have no idea. The record goes on. <laughs> impaled horrors as a impaled horror as chunk of wood pierces teen's bum cheek in a freak sledge accident. Yeah, that. Everything's going on in the world. And uh, the record's running on a wee boy getting a scale from his ears. <laughs> he couldn't make it up. <laughs> uh, and the star is on Nick, meaning Nicola Sturgeon, asking, was Celtic trip to Dubai um, essential football? Uh, essential. Well, the answer to that, of course, is not. It was a training camp. Because they held the training camp in Lennox Town. <coughs> After all, that's where the training facility is. Now, I'm sorry about the interruptions there, we say that in our, our bloody phone. Um, but let's have a look and see what you've got today. What? Don't get me started, I'm annoyed enough. Ah, so your addiction to candy crush has taken a hit this morning. <coughs> no secret service, get security updates. Right, what have we got? Right, so it's quite a lot there. Um, there was Merlin Owen, but there's quite a lot there, you know. Um, the problems from Northern Ireland, the collapse of the price of fish, and the collapse of fisheries. Um, as I say, Road Hawley's problems continue, border problems continue. Um, Sunak offering up no further business support. Theresa May warning the rest of the UK that Scotland leaving the, the, the UK was a clear and present danger to the UK's status in the world. Um, they say there was quite a lot there. Davy Camden. After uh, Camden, you know, I didn't bother. Hey, what else we got? When does Westminster play fair? Westminster never played fair. It's why the Eng England flies the flag of Genoa. Because they were known to be crooks, thieves, and carpetbaggers seven, eight hundred years ago. So they actually had to rent the flag of another place, the city of Genoa, the city state of Genoa, to fly on their ships. And otherwise, otherwise they would get into port. The English elite, no, the English people, get this straight, the English elite, no, the English people, have never played fair, ever. She's telling me my coffee's ready, Thomas. I've got my coffee. I can tell you exactly what I saw about Thomas. She got up this morning, did something to her phone, and now every time she picks up, it speaks to her. It won't let her on to Candy Crush, and she's got a serious Candy Crush addiction. <laughs> hmm. So she's trying to get a grip of the a, a boy across the road. Um, a, to get a grip of James to come out and fix the phone so that she can go into Candy Crush while she's at her work on her break. Ah, you're right, Gordon. Davy is experienced driving difficulties this morning. But I give you all a laugh. That's the main thing. You know, it lightened the mood because it, that, the news is very heavy. I Bert, see he is. See, I was winding me up. 
Nine Wells should make the Scottish vaccine, should they, uh, Marlene? Uh, we're, in, we're treating them all in a way. Ah, we got on all right. Ah. <laughs> Ask me tomorrow. Uh, I shall be fine tomorrow. Candy Crush will be back on. Edith, you remember speaking to um, soldiers who served in Northern Ireland during the Troubles and uh, they, they, they told, laughing with told stories about how they packed uh, nails and other stuff behind the rubber bullets. Um, I'm afraid uh, technically uh, that's not possible, Edith. Anything that was doing the barrel would need to be in front of the rubber bullet because the partition caps behind the bullet. So if you put anything behind the bullet, then a partition cap which fires a projectile wouldn't go off. So whoever these people are will talk crap to you. I as shocking as things I can up to doing that road, Susie. <laughs> Marlene says, Davy says, Weast. Uh. Oh, you're late the day, Robert. Get on a naughty step. Knee lines, naughty step Five first. Lines. I've got apparently Robert, you've got 200 lines to produce and all. Well, apparently Dragon's in a bad mood, you've taken, <laughs> you've taken 400 lines, Robert. <coughs> the worst president the US ever had? Hey, Owen, Woods was the worst uh, Prime Minister there's ever been, so I guess. Um, that's the case. Gordon Brown's a traitor. Uh, that's strong language, uh, Sandra. You think Sarah's been flipped by MI5? <laughs> I think so I know. <laughs> Thomas Shelty get 10 in a row, 10 days quarantine. <laughs> I'm no much into football these days, I wasn't when I was younger. Here's hoping more and more uh, folk open, um, open their eyes here in Scotland, I hope so too. Yeah, lockdowns cause stress amongst couples. Fact, their life's no change that much, Colin, so it's just a case of Sarah's phone's playing up, so technology's causing trouble in my house this morning. Ignored by Westminster, ignored by the Royals, and constantly downtrodden. Time we leave, absolutely right, Margaret. Uh, at least it's not Alexa this time, mate. <laughs> ah, you're right there, Silver. Apparently, with the expletive in there, Sarah's getting a new phone. There was no need to swear, but she's swearing anyway. Hey, you still think uh, all contact sports should be cancelled, including football? You know, that's a fair point, John. You go and join uh, Robert in the naughty step, John. You can see cushions being thrown here, can you, Kate? Sarah doesn't throw cushions. Sarah throws plates. A bit of geek in her. Aye, I have seen the free meals, uh, school meals being dealt out, out down that road. So, what's happening down that road is the £30 a head, instead of being issued in a voucher to families that could take them into stores and exchange them for food, they're being given straight to a private company and they're supplying food. One loaf, Two, tar two carrots, two potatoes, three apples, a couple of slices of uh, cheese, um, a tin of beans, a couple of tiny wee chocolate bars, and all that for 30 quid. Unbelievable what they're doing that road. Oh, and sorry, two bananas. Westminster Playfair, these people there. Price of fish collapsed. I think they're starting to flounder, James. <laughs> yeah, well, we're back to the Christmas cracker jokes. Aye. Uh, Mahi, you're probably right there. Um, Pre-Christmas, it would have been 40 or 60 pounder bolts. And yesterday, 8 quid, aye.
Bertie, of course Scotland leaving the UK upsets their credibility in the world as, <laughs> as they become nothing. They're already nothing. Putin said this years ago, he, he said it straight to David Cameron's face. He tell him, you have nothing. You're a tiny wee island off the coast of Europe. Nobody bloody well listens to you. You know, I see these kid on nuclear weapons along there that are out there, you probably don't work. That's just what we call willy wagon. You know, it's a grandstanding on a massive scale. You know, it's like the guy with the trophy wife in the Fiat uh, Ferrari, but no kids because he hasn't got any reproductive organs. They mean nothing. Aye, the old Genoa for a few hundred years of renting a flag, you're absolutely right. Over 200 regular views now as I look. Well, that's good. Um, I'm, glad, I'm, I'm glad to have you all aboard, folks. <coughs> right, that's us coming up to the 45-minute mark, folks. So you know what that means. That means it's a time to do the usual. And he, apparently, once I've hung this up, saying he's going to eat me pelters. <laughs> I think I'll just stay on me use lot. <laughs> Safety in number, folks. There's a couple of hundred of you that can protect me. <laughs> now, here we go. The usual stuff, folks. Kind, courteous to your friends, your family, your neighbours and your community. Does the march believe in this pandemic or no? Observe facts. Face coverings and enclosed public spaces. Avoid large gatherings, especially my house right now because I'm about to take pelters. <laughs> Clean hands and surfaces regularly. Two metres social distancing when you're out and about. And, uh, and avoid Sarah if you're out and about. <laughs> <coughs> Shouldn't they be out and about unless you're getting the messages? Get back in the house. And uh, book a test if you need one. Alright. Have a nice day and we'll see you all tomorrow. <laughs>